what could live in the deep waters of our planet capable of eating a creature as giant as a whale? Brace yourself, because in this video, we will present the whale eater monsters that hide in the ocean. On August 13, 2012, a female fin whale of about 66 feet long ended stranded on the coast of St. Austell Beach in England. The incident was documented both in video and in photographs. According to the reports, the whale swam to shallow waters and remained there until the tide was going down and ended stranded on the beach. Despite the efforts to rescue it, the whale that was malnourished, extremely weak and with serious injuries on its face and eyes, died a little time after it was found. The photographs taken at the moment of the sighting revealed that the face of this giant animal was covered with deep, open wounds. It was then when the researchers that were studying the possible causes of death of the animal noticed that the whale showed a series of deep perforations through the right side of its inferior jaw. Perforations that were visible on the photographs. The curious thing of it all is that these injuries were perfectly separated from each other, following a straight pattern, although then they began to curve, forming a long U-shape. To experts, this was unmistakable. It was the mark of a bite. According to photographs taken that day, another giant creature, with a jaw similar to those of a crocodile armed with long, sharp teeth, attacked this marine mammal. But which animal we could be possibly talking about? It should be noted that on Weymouth Bay, on the south coast of England, they collected evidence about a possible predator that followed the seas during the Jurassic period. It's about the fossil of a giant reptile known as Pliosaurus kivani. In honor to Kevin Sheehan, the owner of the cafe that found its remains and that spent almost eight years rebuilding its skull piece by piece. To this day, the fossil is in the Dorset County Museum in Dorchester and presents a skull with teeth perfectly aligned, about 8 feet long. It has been estimated that the size of this reptile was about 39 feet. The photographs of the incident were the key to keep prevailing clues about the death of this whale. One of them, specifically the one that shows the rescuer surrounding the head of the animal, shows that the inferior jaw that was bitten measured approximately 5 feet. Given that the perforations were shallow and uneven at the tip of the mouth of the whale and that this one had a pretty elongated head that suffered more scratches and less teeth marks, as it had been inside the jaws of a predator, its attacker had to have a pretty big mouth. In fact, if you take a photograph of the skull of the Pliosaurus of Weymouth Bay as reference, it's estimated that the jaws of the possible beast that attacked this whale measured about 9 or 11 feet long. With a ratio of 5 to 1, from head to tail, we will get a Pliosaurus of 59 feet long, the same size of the animal that attacked the U-boat in 1915. As we said before, the reports also claim that the whale was malnourished, extremely weak and had several injuries all over its body and on its eyes, as it can be seen on the pictures. The rescuers also pointed out that the animal had suffered abdominal wounds, a fact that could involve the current ambush predators, like the white sharks. These attack from below, so that's why it's most likely that the whale was attacked initially by the abdomen. Besides, attacking the face of the whale in the hardest and bony part of these animals would have been less productive. On the other hand, if the first attack wouldn't have been effective, the whale attacker would have simply waited for the whale to die, as the dragons of Komodo do. These lizards land a mortal bite and then they wait for the prey to die to be able to eat it. The attacker could have chased the wounded whale and attacked it repeatedly with a single object of preventing it from eating or resting. Therefore, it would have been exhausted and without strength to defend itself. In that case, it would have been an easy prey. To this day, the real cause of the death of this whale is unknown, but it's highly likely that it hadn't been the only victim. In Cayetania Catitamrida, one of the most important biographies about the life and teachings of Caitanya Mahaprabhu, the founder of the Hindu religious movement Gaudiya Vaishnavism. It collects a series of verses that refers to a legendary fish called Tamanjila. It is said that this creature had lived in the oceans of our planet as the biggest predator ever known. In fact, the etymology of this word is the next one. In Sanskrit, Timi means whale and Yila means swallow. 
Therefore, Temenjela literally means swallow a whale, a fact that could help us imagine the size of these beasts. The Srimad Bhagavatam, the Ramayana, the Mahabharata, and other Vedic scriptures talk often of fantastic places and creatures that could have lived once on the earth, as is the case of this mysterious fish. According to the verses of the Ramayana, one of the most important works of ancient India, the Temenjila would inhabit the waters between India and Sri Lanka. Besides, they say that it had an enormous size and the whales were part of its menu. As we all know, the whales are one of the biggest creatures in the ocean, but unlike the Timangela, these ones are not extinct yet. Some could reach 65 feet long, like the shark whale of the Indic Ocean. Despite its name and its aspect, it isn't a predator, but a simple whale. However, the Timangela was the most feared creature of the ocean. In fact, it was able to swallow an entire whale in a single bite. But this marine beast really exists today, or is it just a part of the poetry of the writers of Vedic literature? The truth is that it is a very difficult question to answer. Many of the descriptions that had been collected of this animal come close to several descriptions of the fossils of the Megalodon found in different parts of the world, including Europe, North America, South Africa, Australia, and India. The studies that have been made about these fossils indicate that this giant mega shark was a predator capable of feeding from anything that crossed its path, including, as suspected, whale meat. It's very likely that these important verses to the Hindu culture that talk about the Timanjila as an ocean voracious predator make reference to a predator that really existed in prehistory, and there is a record of it the Megalodon. Nevertheless, it would be necessary to conduct more investigations to be able to confirm this hypothesis. Do you think that all these mythological creatures that exist are based on monsters that truly existed or are just part of the imagination of the writers of these verses? There are many who believe that in the seas, oceans, and remote areas of our planet, there are still species living that are considered extinct. According to the writer Max Hawthorne, the oceans are the most diverse and claustrophobic of Earth's places. If these prehistoric creatures are still living, we need to locate them, study and learn from them, and most importantly, protect them. We could be in front of the biggest survivors in history, the true kings of the depths.